CloudDB, shaping your new normal. Welcome everyone to the 2021 APAC Ground Vehicles Virtual Tour by APAC OUC. This year our event would be the biggest one ever done with 144 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops, and hands-on labs from 100 different speakers over seven k days. Also, it would cover sessions in four different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions as you can. I would like to say thanks to all Oracle user groups and Java user groups that made this event possible, and also to our sponsors, Oracle Ground Bikers, and our main sponsor, Cloud TV. Now, for today's session, uh, Oracle Apex Low Code Platform by Frank OUC. Please feel free to write questions at any time during the session at the chat tab of the live webinar, and the speaker will be answering at the end, end of the session. If there are any issues during the presentation, please feel free to contact me at any time on the chat of the live webinar. Now, without any further delay, I would like to leave you with this amazing session by Frank Williams. Okay, thank you very much, Rajesh. Um, you can see my screen okay, Rajesh? Yes, I can see. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, session today, uh, we're talking about Oracle Apex low code for data driving apps. Um, the big takeaway is uh, for people that are new to Apex, go to apex.oracle.com and that's where your fun can begin. So just a little bit on low code. Um, we're pretty much aware that low, there's a number of trends out there that have been recognized by uh, industry analysts like Forrester and Gartner. Um, making it very clear organizations should be considering low code development frameworks. Um, and the idea is what you can see there on the right, um, it's really a matter of minimal coding, a lot less expensive, um, highly productive, faster delivery. And because you're using these frameworks, it also means you're minimizing areas where things can go wrong. And it also makes it easier for people to get involved. And that's where Oracle Apex comes in. Oracle Apex has been around Oracle for a very long time. Um, and it's recognized around the globe with uh, over 500,000 people in the developer community. It's easy to learn and get started. Um, if you're Focusing on using relational data and SQL, it's a great capability. If you're thinking about JSON and REST APIs, it's a great capability. If uh, you're looking at building apps that are browser-based, responsive, and also working on the mobile apps, it's a great capability. Every Oracle database has the capability of being able to use Apex. And not only can you use it with apex.oracle.com, if you Google always free Oracle, you can start to experience it straight away. Now, Apex is just a tool, right? So the question is, um, the whole thing I talked about here is how can you get started and move very quickly? And if you think about um, how organizations do get started, usually, um, there's someone here on the left that's got some sort of new application idea looking at some sort of outcome value. And then you've got somebody here on the right thinking about the technology capability. And so someone's trying to work out, how do I use this new piece of tech? And you then need to work out, how do you activate what the idea is? How do you go through an iterative process where you can build and collaborate? And then how do you deploy this relatively quickly and go through this sort of exercise? And when you're looking at Apex, um, there's usually a number of different use cases or scenarios. Um, and the scenarios I've got here is maybe you're starting with a spreadsheet and you want to move to a data or an app or an API manifestation. Um, and we could have an example here where I'm looking at what wine do I pick for dinner? I mean, the second one 
is, hey, I've just got an idea. I want to see how quickly I can take it to a model and then turn it to a data or application. The third one is, hey, I'm looking for an incident tracking app. And the cool thing is with Apex is we've got a number of ready-made apps that come with data models and apps ready to go, a little bit like an app store. And then the other one is, hey, I'm dealing with a JSON file. Um, how do I actually interact with that JSON file and feel quite comfortable with it? And once again, you want to deal with the data, the app, the SQL. And here on the right, you can see the reason why Apex is so cool. Um, easy to learn. It's got um, low code, the responsive. It's got testing. It's got a number of technologies that make it easy to get started. And the key thing here, when you, what you're seeing here is, if you're dealing with somebody in the business, um, how do you get them to talk about their their scenario, their use case? So the idea is get them to talk about what they feel comfortable with, whether it's the UI, the apps, or the data model, and then get some sort of storyboard. Once you've got that, you then need access to Apex. And I've already said, there's many ways to access that. All you need to do is have a database platform. And as we've talked about, whether you start with data, whether you start with the UI or the API or the app gallery, and then you actually go through an iterative process to do that. So you can see step A, step B, and C. And then once you've got something, you wanna share and showcase your learnings and then work out how to get to the next step. And the point here is, um, how do you get started? And once you're started, plan for a positive experience with skilling and outcome. So the four um, data driving ideas we've got here is the wine selection for dinner, the app for small projects, the app for incident tracking, and the beer selection for the barbecue. Um, and you can see for each of these, I've got a series of steps. The wine selection, the idea is you load, you, you've got to actually get your Excel spreadsheet, do your data load, get the wine data set, from there create the app, um, then you've got your little wine app. You can enable a REST API. You can do some query wine JSON. Then you've got your app for your small project. So let's say I've got an idea. I want to actually try and have some sort of tracking around my teams. So the idea is how do I do that? I do that with quick SQL. I then auto generate a data set. I go off and create the app and I've got my little app. Um, the app for incident tracking. Um, once, once again here, I go to look at the app gallery and get that up and going. And then the beer selection for the barbecue. I'm dealing with a beer.json file. I load that and then I've got the ability to once again get something up and going there. So the challenge now is, can I do um, a number of these in 25 minutes? So let's kick that off. So I'm going to just get out of uh, my PowerPoint. I'm now going into um, a live demo. So I've logged into my Apex capability. Um, the very first thing I'll do is just a little bit of a quick intro into Apex. Um, Apex has got an app builder where you can create apps. Um, you can see I've already got a repository of apps that have already uh, have been installed. These are apps from the App Store. Uh, you can see there's that incident tracking one that I mentioned. Um, if I click on S SQL Workshop, I've got the ability to check out what objects I've already got in here. Um, I can run SQL commands, uh, SQL scripts, etc. I can do some team development and gallery. So my first challenge was how quickly can I get that Wine CSV at installed. So I'm now going to go off and look for my wine spreadsheet. Um, let me go here and let me move this over to here to find it. So I'm just going to look for my Apex wine sheet. Um, and here it is here. I'm just going to pick up this one called Vino. 
dot csv and I'm going to call it wine and so my table is going to be called wine and you can see here it's already introspectively looked at that uh, spreadsheet and you can see a province, a region, a title, a price, a points, etc. like that. Um, I'm going to create a new table called wine. I'm going to prefix it with uh, GB for groundbreakers and um, I can preview my data but hey I'm under time pressure um, I'm now going to go load data and 2300 rows um, I'll look at the table in a moment but I'm going to go right now and just go create application It's called GB Wine. You can see it's got a home screen. It's got a dashboard. It's going to have a faceted search um, and it's going to have an interactive report. I might hit check all here to get access control, feedback, activity reporting. And I'll hit create application. Shouldn't take much longer. Getting awkward now. There we are. So you can see it's actually generated all of these screens. We haven't got time to look at them. Let's go off and run it. Um, and I just better check my username password. And now I've got this little screen here. I've got my dashboard. So it shows me where the wines are, which region. Um, I can actually click on, the, say, the, the wines here in 90, and it brings up, and I can have a look at those. Um, let's click on the faceted search. So this is actually really cool. Um, I can pick... You can see it's got this nice little faceted thing here. I can actually click on that. It shows me uh, the wines in terms of, you know, how many per region. Let's get out of here, though, because uh, I'm in that time pressure. I'm looking for wines that are in South Australia, wines that are greater than 91. Um, I'm looking for something in the Barossa Valley or Barossa, and I'm looking for a Shiraz. Um, and... Um, I'm actually looking for um, something that's from Torbrek and bang, I've actually got the choices that I've made there. And you can see um, it's starting to build those up. I can take those off. So that faceted search is quite powerful and I haven't done anything there. Um, I'm going to click on um, the wine report. So right now I'm going to actually say... Um, I'm looking for wines that are greater than, I'm going to do a filter on wines um, that are, the points is greater than 90. Um, apply. I also want something in the Barossa. And um, I'm wanting something really cheap. Oops, I did the wrong one. Um, so there I've got, um, there's a, 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 a Cab Sauvignon from Thorn Clark for $15, greater than, 91 po uh, greater than 91 points for $15. Okay, so that's my first demo. Um, let's go back to um, my slide deck. So what I've just done quickly there was I've just done demo number one, the wine selection for... Um, 
getting something up and going. How long did that take? So let's now move on to the second challenge I've got, which is an app for small projects. I'm just going to say I want team projects. I'm going to do that in quick SQL. I'm going to go uh, generate a data set and then I'm going to have a create app and then there's, we'll go into the app and have a look at it. So let's bring back our Apex environment. Let's get out of here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go to this thing called Quick SQL. There's Quick SQL there. Um, and in Quick SQL, I can actually start to type in words like Teams. Um, and I can say there's an owner of the team. Um, there's a project in the team. Um, and we can say there's a name for the project. And as I'm typing all of this, you can actually see that it's starting to generate this SQL here on the right hand side. Um, instead of doing that, I'm very fortunate that um, there's actually some samples here. So if I go help, um, this actually explains how all of this works. So if you don't want to type in the actual details, um, like for characters and dates, it actually tells you what to do. And for table directives, you can actually generate some random data. Um, there's column directives. But what, I'm going to click on this sample one. And I've already got one here for project management. I'm going to go load model. And you can see here, it's actually got all of the examples I was talking about. And here on the right hand side, you can see what it's generated for me here. And I'm, I'll go right to the bottom here. There we go. Bang. Oh yeah, here we are. You can see the sample data. So it's insert five, insert 10, etc. So I'm going to go off and go ge um, generate SQL in a moment. Once again, I'm going to go settings and I'm going to put GB as the prefix or GB, actually GB underscore as the prefix. Um, maybe I'll put some audit columns. Um, maybe I'll include some drops. Um, and, um, and you can see I've got created by or updated by. So that's the actual part of the audit columns. I'll go save changes. I'll go generate SQL again. And now you can see it's got those created by, etc. cetera, there updated. So I'm now going to go, so I did generate SQL. I'll go save SQL. I'll just call it F. I'll now go review and run. Um, I'm now going to go uh, run that. We'll have a few errors because I've got the drop table in there. Um, so there we are. That's all run. I'm now going to go off and create an app. Create application. This is where there's that awkward silence again. Um, so I'll call this one project. Um, I'll call it GB underscore project for groundbreakers. Once again, you can see we've got a few um, screens already organized there. I'm going to go create app. Okay, and now that's up there. Not as many uh, screens because I didn't ask for all those configurations. Uh, and pick my username, sign in. And now I've got projects, milestones, links, attachments. Um, and now, and this is all just randomized sample data that's actually been set up there. So you can see there's these apps that are ready, these projects that are ready to go. Um, we can hit um, or just cancel that. Uh, milestones. Um, and you can see that's, you know, they're a fully functional app that uh, can easily work. And it's the idea is you've got something that um, people can look at, understand, 
um, and start to get an idea of. Um, I'm just going to click on Object Browser and um, I'll put in GB and hit. So there are the, the there's the wine and then the, here are the tables that have been generated there. Okay, so if I now go back to my uh, PowerPoint, I've just done that app for small projects. There's an example of that um, quick SQL that then helped you generate that idea to model. Um, now let's actually have a look at this thing, the app for the incident tracking. I've already got that installed here. Um, so the, the thing that's really positive is Oracle recognizes um, organizations would like to see a sample app of what's possible. Um, and that's under the gallery capability. I've already got that up and going. So I'm just going to go off and show you that app running. Um, log in here again. And um, you can see I've, this app, this is a little app for um, incident management, open tickets, unassigned tickets, closed tickets, uh, shows you recent activity, open incidents by product, uh, if you've got tags, if you've got customers. So this is a fully functional incident management app that you can start to modify according to your own organizational needs. Um, in the administration window, there's a heap of things you can configure. You can define what products you want to have incidents managed for. You can work out what categories you want the incidents for. You can define how you want to define your customers, uh, the contacts. Um, I actually had that notification there, code day every Friday. We can change that. Um, Groundbreakers tour is great. Um, so that will be on the front window in a minute. Um, you've also got the ability to here to actually have these build options. Um, so there's this thing called content completeness that's currently turned on. I could actually turn that off. Um, inline page help and a validation widget. So these are configuration capabilities you can data drive into that. Um, you, at the moment, there wasn't any sample data. I just had three incidents that I did enter. If I go load sample data, we'll actually see a lot more in there. So I'm going to go back to home. And you can see now we've got 18 um, incidents there with that. And you can also see my little message there, Groundbreakers Tour is great. Just take note of how this app looks. Um, I've actually got another app uh, called Initiative Tracker, uh, which is not installed here, but I've actually modified the incident tracking app um, to actually um, to manage initiatives. So it's exactly the same uh, topology, and I've just gone ahead and changed how that works. Okay, the last capability is... Um, being able to load a JSON file and be able to deal with that in a native manner. So it's it's our last demo. And the way to deal with that, I could actually come here um, and go data workshop, go load data. I'm going to go off and look for my uh, beer. I need to go off and look for my beer file. Uh, where is that? Bear with me as I find my beer JSON file, which I am struggling with. I've actually found something different. I've actually found, I haven't found my beer, but I have found a... Um, a joke file, um, which is, um, better make sure it's a joke file. So this is another, um, oh yeah, I have found it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this, and this is a set of jokes. And so, so it's actually a JSON file. I should open it up. 
Um, just so you can see, it is a, um, a set of jokes. Open with edit no pass. Okay, so here, here is the file open in um, at Notepad Plus, and you can see it's just the JSON file. Um, so I could actually load that, and that goes into, I'll call it GB underscore jokes, um, and I'll load that there. That's not what I want to do, but I just want to show you um, there's two ways to deal with the JSON file. So if I go view table um, and I'll go GB and look at that, and there's that file. I can now look at the data in there. So it's actually turned that JSON file into a relational table. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to show you over here, I can actually load what we call a soda collection. Oh, maybe not. So what I should have done was grant that privilege. And if I was to grant that privilege, I could then load that in and it would preserve the JSON document um, and be able to load that in there. Um, and I, that's where my demo has failed. So the idea is you can load that in. Um, you can preserve the JSON format. And at the same time, you can also uh, look at it with a relational view. And here's an example of what ended up being produced. So key thing I want to actually articulate here is you've seen me very quickly go from spreadsheet to app, uh, use quick SQL to create a app, um, the idea of the app gallery, and the, also the idea was to take a JSON file and show you what was able to be created. And the key thing is you just need to be able to access Apex. And Apex is available all over the place. Um, whether it's, as you can see here in the bottom right-hand corner, apex.oracle.com, whether you Google always free and then uh, be able to access it there. If you've got access to any on-premise Oracle database, you can access it there, or you can download the Oracle database code, install it on your computer, database XC, get it up and going, or Google Oracle Live Labs, and you can also get a reservation and, and use it for free there. The other, there's a couple other really, really cool links um, to show you what's possible. Um, totally encourage you, just go apex.oracle.com slash charts. That shows you all the example charts. Uh, slash UT shows you the universal theme. Slash API for APIs. I do encourage you to go to Oracle Live Labs. Really appreciate what's out there. Um, I, while Apex is a tool, there's actually a number of different ways in which you can use Apex. And as you can see here, JavaScript for Apex, um, using it from a REST perspective, using it from that spreadsheet perspective, using it from an existing relational table, um, breaking it up and treating it as a remote data source. It's absolutely spectacular what's possible with Apex. Um, Apex.oracle.com slash success. You can read all about these brilliant customers and what they're doing with it. Um, and Apex has been incredibly important for how we respond to the pandemic as well. So just finishing up, Oracle Apex, it's been out there 15 years. Um, hundreds of thousands of users are using Apex. We've got a vibrant, glowing, growing community, 175 countries, and we're solving business problems across industries and geographies. Thank you for your time and appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk about Oracle Apex low code for data driving apps. And that's it. Thanks, Franco. That's a great presentation. Uh, let me have a look if there are any questions. I don't see any questions, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great presentation. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation.
today. And please don't forget to register for uh, uh, the rest of the sessions in the conference. And please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Okay, Rajesh. Can you uh, now you can press stop recording on the top where yep. you press recording? Stop rec. Yep. And soon I think that the record is stop. It's not stop yet. Is where the circle ready? Stop and log out all participants or the stop session? Just no, no, no. Is the one on the left side that is a dot red? Say, there we go. They said all stop right. red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. CloudDB, shaping your new normal.